Marhaba. Welcome back to Connections with Arabic Everywhere. My name is Omar, with you as always from Amman, Jordan. And today we have a newbie lesson for you. The title of this lesson is, Hello there. And as you can probably guess, we'll have some focus on greetings and introductions. But don't worry, we're going to chat it up a bit too. Let's get started by first listening to the dialogue without any translation help three times. When listening, I want you to imagine the following context. Two co-workers, Eric and Musa, are meeting for the first time. Eric's cultural background is a bit of a mystery for Musa, but he gets it straight in the end. Let's listen. Dialogue. First time. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan, Musa. Min ayna ant? Ana min Amerika. Amerika? Yani ana urduni Amerikay. Aywa. Dialogue. Second time. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan, Musa. Min ayna ant? Ana min Amerika. Amerika? Yani ana urduni Amerikay. Aywa. Dialogue. Third time. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan, Musa. Min ayna ant? أنا من أمريكا أمريكا يعني أنا أردني أمريكي أيوة Great! Well, I think that a nice, clear translation of this dialogue would help us out a lot. So let's go ahead and do that. أهلاً وسهلاً Welcome أهلاً وسهلاً Welcome أهلاً وسهلاً موسى Welcome موسى أهلاً وسهلاً موسى Welcome موسى من أين أنت؟ Where are you from? من أين أنت؟ Where are you from? أنا من أمريكا. I am from the U.S. أنا من أمريكا. I am from the U.S. أمريكا. The U.S. أمريكا. The U.S. يعني أنا أردني أمريكي. I mean I am Jordanian American. يعني أنا أردني أمريكي. I mean I I'm Jordanian American. Aywa. Right. Aywa. Right. Okay, now that we've listened to the entire dialogue and translated it, what do you say we get into some more detail? Ahlan wa sahlan. At the beginning of this dialogue, we hear Musa say, Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan. Which we've translated as, Hello. In reality, there is more to this greeting than meets the translation-dependent eye. The literal meaning of this greeting is something along the lines of family and ease. Now, what on earth does that mean? Well, the person greeting you or welcoming you into their home or inviting you into their store is basically saying, don't worry about it, consider us family. Of course, in terms of usage, we say ahlan wa sahlan in many of the same contexts that we use Hi in English, so it's okay for us to think about it in that way. Ahlan wa sahlan, Musa. Notice the response that Eric gives. He says, Ahlan wa sahlan, Musa. Ahlan wa sahlan, Musa. The first part, Ahlan wa sahlan, as we know, means hi. Whereas Musa, Musa is simply his name. A good thing to keep in mind here is that Eric is not simply parroting the greeting he heard from Musa. Rather, it's the expected response to that greeting. We'll see in a future lesson that there isn't only one, in fact, there are actually a number of expected responses. However, when you hear someone say, Ahlan wa sahlan, it's very common to respond in kind and just say, Ahlan wa sahlan. Min ayna ant? If you ever come to the Middle East, you'll definitely hear the question Musa is asking. He says, Min ayna anta? Min ayna Enta. Let's try and break this question down a bit. The first word, min, min, means from. The second word, aina, aina, means where. When we put the two together and say, min aina, min aina, we're saying from where. Okay, now, great. In order to understand the last part, I want you to think back to our previous lesson. There's a word that we learned that sounds very similar to the word we have here. Musa says, Min aina enta. Min aina enta. The last word, enta, enta. 
Does it ring a bell? It's very similar to the word NT, NT that we learned previously. NT means you and is used in the feminine. Enta means you as well, but is used in the masculine form. So when we put it all together, we get where are you from when we say min aina enta. Ana min Amerika. As we said before, if you spend some time in the Middle East, you'll most likely get asked where you're from. In fact, you'll probably get asked a whole lot more than that. They'll ask you where you're from, if you're married, what you studied in college, and about your favorite color, all in a 30-second barrage of questions. This is especially the case in cabs. So before you come, it's a good idea to have in mind how you respond to what at first seems like a bit of interrogation, but don't worry, they all mean well. And in no time, you'll have the whole script down pat. You'll actually get to the point where you get into the cab, and before the cab driver even opens his mouth, you'll have already said, my name is Mike, I'm from America, I'm single, I like blue, take me to the airport. Here, Eric helps us out with one of these responses. He says, Ana min Amerika. Ana min Amerika. This sentence should be pretty easy for us. Of the three words, we already know two. The first, Ana, Ana, we know means I. The second, Min, Min, we just learned, and it means from. So we know that he's going to tell us where he's from. So where do you think Eric calls home? He says, Ana min Amerika. I am from Amerika. Does Amerika sound at all familiar? Well, it means America. Isn't that great when you get words like this? It makes our job so much easier. It's almost as if you don't really have to learn Arabic with these types of words, just how to speak English with an Arab accent. So when we take the whole sentence, we can see that Eric is saying, I'm from America, when he says, Ana min Amerika. Amerika. Musa's response isn't exactly ripe with meaning, but it does get us to think about an important aspect of any language. He says, Amerika? Now, we know that Amerika means America, but do you notice the tone in his voice? What does it sound like? It seems like a mix of surprise and disbelief. Those are pretty big meanings, and they're coming all through the sound of his voice. He doesn't have to specifically say that he's surprised, and this is the important aspect that we just mentioned. We can get a lot from our interactions with others in any culture simply by using the tools for expression that are shared across languages and cultures. This background experience that we have is in fact ripe with meaning, and we should actively engage in using it. Before we take a look at what Eric is saying here, I want us to think about something together in English. We know that Eric is from America. If someone were to ask him, in English, what his nationality is, what do you think his response would be? He'd probably say, I'm American. Well, what if he were from Canada? Well, he'd say, I'm Canadian. How about India? Well, he'd say, I'm Indian. Do you notice what we do in English when we want to talk about the citizen or the person rather than the country? We add the N particle to the end of the word. American, Canadian, Indian. In Arabic, we have something very similar, and we can see it in Eric's response. He says, يعني أنا أردني أمريكي. Let's skip over the word يعني for a second. He says, أنا أردني أمريكي. Ana, we know well. How about Urduni or Amriki? Urduni means Jordanian, and Amriki means American. Whereas before, when we were talking about the country, we just said Amrika, Amrika. Here, we get rid of the a uh sound at the end of the word and replace it with an e sound, Amriki. This sound represents the n particle that we just mentioned in American or Canadian. And we can see the same thing with the other word, Urduni, Urdun. Urdun is Jordan. So Urduni is a Jordanian. Here then, we can see that by saying, Ana Urduni Amriki, Ana Urduni Amriki, Eric is saying, I am Jordanian American. I guess that explains why his Arabic is so good. How about that first word, yani? Yani. The word yani is a verb that literally means 
he means. However, that's not the way it's being used here and will not be the way that you'll see it used in most everyday speech. Yani is much more of a filler word that you could compare to um or uh that we have in English. Now, believe me, when I tell you this, you will hear this all the time. I mean all the time. I mean, I would actually go as far as to say that a large percentage of many Arabic conversations consist in repeating this word over and over again with various hand gestures until the meaning is understood. No exaggeration. Aywa. Musa has gotten us used to his one-word answers. Here he just says, Aywa, Aywa, which means yes or right, depending on the context. Musa is using it here to say, Aywa, I get it now. Now that we have our analysis behind us, let's listen to the dialogue one more time. أهلا وسهلا أهلا وسهلا موسى من أين أنت؟ أنا من أمريكا أمريكا؟ يعني أنا أردني أمريكي أيوة That's all we have for this one Until next time مع السلامة